Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome, welcome to uh, I guess building your community through interactive live streaming. Um, so we're gonna be talking, just like the title suggests, how to build your community through interactive live streaming, um, and how you can leverage interactive for that. Um, so we're actually the Beam team, um, which in the last two months you may have heard a bit about us. We're actually acquired by Microsoft. Uh, we're a live streaming service uh, that does a bunch of cool stuff. But really what we're going to be talking about today doesn't just apply to Beam, but it can apply to any live streaming service or site out there. So Twitch, YouTube Gaming, Zubu, Hitbox, um, really anything. And we have some great panelists up here that come from a variety of backgrounds. Um, so this will work for anything, but uh, with a little bit of focus on Beam, just because we are the Beam team. So um, bias there. Um, and disclaimer on that. Three of us work for Microsoft. We're really big on transparency, so just want to make sure that, that that's known. Um, but with that, we will jump into the team and do some quick introductions just to learn more about who we are. Ethan, if you want to start. Hi, my name is Ethan, also known as Love Him for the Win, or formerly Minecraft WB on YouTube. I've been in this community for over six years. I have a uh, community of over a half a million, depending on all my different platforms, so whether that's Twitch. Can you hear me okay? There we go. <laughs> now you can hear me better. All right, cool. All right, so yeah, so I've been doing this for a while. I have a pretty large community, um, and uh, I just recently switched over to Beam for the interactive part of it, and we'll get into that in a little bit. That's for you. Here, she's over there. Hi, everyone. I'm Heather, also known as Mrs. Lucklin in the community. I've been a part of this community for about six years. Um, between YouTube, uh, Twitch, and other streaming sites, uh, we actually started out as a family. This is my husband, and we started out. We're no longer a family. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. no, we started out as a family on YouTube doing <laughs> Minecraft videos. Yeah, we started out as a family doing Minecraft videos with our son. He was about nine years old at the time, so we did, you know, Minecraft Family Adventures was what we were known for. And so from that, I actually started working in the industry. I've been working from, you know, conventions and and YouTube network, I was a, a community manager for one of the networks, and then I've moved over to Beam, and I've been with Beam since the very beginning. And so I'm really excited about you know what we have to offer. But yeah, I'm the community manager, and I take care of all. I'm head of the engagement team, so we do like all the social media and the forums and Twitter and stuff like that. Great, Ethan on the end. We actually have two Ethans up yes. here, so that's confusing. <laughs> I am little Ethan, Ethan Rothamel. Uh, I started streaming on Twitch back in 2014. Uh, it was kind of more of a hobby while I was working in marketing and helping out with the family business. And then in uh, January, I made the switch to Beam. And I was partnered a few months after that. And then in August, I was hired to be the partner manager over there. Uh, so more of a business-facing side of things, helping out uh, streamers with marketing, um, tips on like taxes, stuff like that. Just any anything they need from me, I can help with, I will. And then helping out Heather with Twitter and engagement stuff. Awesome, and then myself, since I skipped myself, I forgot. <laughs> um, I've been a gamer since I was eight. I've uh, started the business when I was 15, and for the last five years, I've worked across YouTube and Twitch, um, and now Beam, of course, um, building communities and helping streamers to grow their audience. Um, so yeah, that's a bit about me, and here's actually a fun picture of all of us at MineCon recently, um, engaging with people. Um, but we'll jump right into it from there um, and talk about engagement and why that's important. So Ethan, what's, uh, why is engagement important? So first of all, I have a question. How many of you guys uh, have ever live streamed or how many of you guys have watched live streams? Like just by a show of hands. Awesome, that's awesome. like everyone. Wow, Jordan, that's awesome. So uh, the biggest thing for me as a streamer, like I said, I've been streaming for a while. I built my community up to about 70,000 on Twitch. And uh, I mean, it's not big compared to a lot of the other ones, but I kind of now work behind the scenes and stuff now, but it's, so my biggest thing was for me is constant communication when you're live streaming. A lot of live streamers, when they get on there, they start playing a game and they get so focused on the game and they forget about this chat room that's moving over here that's saying, hey, what's going on? I just got home from school and they never see anything. And to me, I feel like that's the most important thing is paying attention to that chat room. You know, you can play your game and have a good time for it. You can discipline yourself to sit there and look at that chat room and play your game and you talk to them because they want to know who you are and they want you to know who they are. And that's how you build a community. That's the most important thing I feel like as a streamer is really paying attention to your chat room. So as an aspiring um, streamer, 
I know it's difficult to you know keep up with your chat. I guess um, on the end, Ethan Rommel, um, how would I, I know you play a lot of FPSs and like chat moves by quickly, and you know FPSs are also quick by nature. Yeah. Um, so do you have any like how would you deal with that as a streamer? Um, it's a really stupid response, but practice is number one. Like you start to learn as you're you know playing that shooter, you're focused, but it's kind of easy to kind of you know look at chat and look back and be like, oh hey, what's going on, man? Um, but but people always I always find when you play like Call of Duty or Battlefield or Halo, as soon as you die, you're just mashing that respawn button, like, oh, I gotta get back in and I gotta help my team. And that is like the best time to just let that respawn timer run out and talk to everybody and be like, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that. And um, late, low latency really helps with that because like with Beam, when you have no latency, your chat starts to know, like, oh, he's dead, I can ask a question. You know what I mean? I have 30 seconds to type a question, he'll see it. And then, you know, you know why, what would you have done? You know, why are you using this gun as opposed to this one? Like your, your power-ups, that kind of stuff. Um, it's really just managing your time because shooters move so quickly. Mm -hmm. So you said low latency. What is, um, what is that? I know and you don't always have that on every service, right? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> with Twitch and most other platforms, you have more of a, you know, it's like 23 seconds or something like that. It kind of depends. But I know w making the switch to Beam, you can have as low as, what, what is it put now, 0.2? It's 200, 200 milliseconds. milliseconds. It's Thank like you. we're talking to you right now. Yeah. And yeah. And so it's literally, and it's expandable too. So it's like we're talking to you guys. There's no delay. Right. And so like when I would watch big streamers on Twitch, and I would watch shooters too, because again, that's my I love shooters, um, and I like like to watch them for the experience and to learn. Um, I would always with Twitch, I'd have to time my question, be like, I think he's gonna die here. You know, like I, I'm 20 seconds behind, so I think he's gonna look, and then like hit enter with my question, and maybe they'll see it. Um, but with Beam, for example, it was nice that I could, you know, people could just plan that right away. I'd be like, oh, yeah, why did you choose the rifle on this map? That kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That's right. the biggest reason why I switched, actually. Like, a lot of people ask me, they're like, hey, you have a pretty large following on Twitch. Why would you switch? And it's like, for me, the biggest thing, like I said, that chat room is the biggest thing, communicating with them. And if you can't communicate with them in real time, by the time 30 seconds goes away, five of them have left. And then all of a sudden, you're looking at your, your, your numbers, and you're like, wow, like, there's nobody in here anymore type thing. So like, you know, that's a really important thing. Mm -hmm. So that two-way conversation really makes a difference when building your community. Because if you're not talking with them, you know, why, why do you want to stay, right? Yep. Sweet. Um, so I guess, uh, Heather, if you want to talk about consistency a bit. And since, yeah, so yeah. I think one of the biggest things when you stream is consistency. You need to make sure that you like have a set schedule and you're going on time every day let's say, or not every day, but at least three to five times a week is probably what we recommend. Uh, so you're, you know, you're going live, you're, it's like a television, sh a television show. They need to know like when you're going live and when you're gonna be on there. And so just making sure that you, know, you, can, you can go three hours or you can go eight hours, 10 hours, whatever you choose, but you need to make sure that you know, you're going and being consistent. And I think another thing a lot of people that do is they see, oh, I only have one or two viewers. Don't worry about the viewer count. Just stream and have fun. Just have fun and engage with, even if it's just one person, chat with them, talk with them, act like you have you know, hundreds of viewers because that's how you grow, is being able, because if they go in and you know, you've got one viewer that's in there and you're not talking to your chat, or you're thinking, oh, it's just one viewer, what does it matter? You know, I'm just gonna just be there. They're gonna end up leaving because no one's talking to them and you're, you're not engaging with them. So that's the biggest thing, is being able to engage with them, make sure that you're consistent and just have fun. Don't worry about the numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and something I think we should ask earlier is how many of you are aspiring content creators? Just raise your hands. Awesome. So um, just want to make sure we're like hitting the right target here. <laughs> we're not like totally off base. Um, but actually, um, how many of you also have schedules as aspiring content creators? Do you have a scheduled time? So that was like a lot of less hands. Um, so you talked about consistency and you know, establishing a schedule. Um, how do you go about that? And actually maybe explain why that's important or, you know. So for that, I think the biggest thing is even if you're just playing one game every single day or whatever the games are, have it on your, on your um, description saying, you know, when you're going live. Make sure that you're sharing that on social media sites like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is. And you know, you need to make sure that they let, that you let them know when you're actually gonna be there and what you're gonna be doing, what game you're playing. A lot of this, another great thing is like on Twitter or, you know, Instagram, do pictures. Graphics are huge. Videos. Do, yeah, a video yeah. too. Do 
a graphic of what you're actually playing because they're going to see that picture and they're going to be like, oh, cool, look, he's playing Call of Duty. I want to go watch or, you know, Minecraft, whatever it might be. And it's huge for that. Yeah, um, Ethan here, Ethan McKinnon, um, I know we're talking about how to leverage social media. And you were, tell, you were telling me the other day how a lot of people don't incorporate social media into their, you know, content yeah. creation. So every schedule. time I go live, I make it a, a thing to do a video on Instagram and I do a video on Twitch. I let everyone know that I'm going live. Like, that's why they're, they follow me. So cause I, when, I'm on, when I'm streaming, I'm like, hey, guys, if you want to know when I go live, follow me on Twitter. So I know they're not going to get mad and think, oh, well, why does he keep spamming me? Well, that's the whole reason why you followed me. So that's why. And so I get that over and over and over. And I know, like, you know, it takes a lot to do that in every day, but it really pays off because, you know, like she said, you don't really worry about the numbers. The numbers will come. If you're an entertainer and people like you, they will come and they will come watch you. And that's all that really matters. Just have fun with it and just have a good time. But yeah, use your different social media platforms. They're there for a reason. Mm -hmm. That's so talking about numbers, I know when you're getting started as a content creator, it can be very, um, you know, discouraging to not have a lot of people there. Um, and that leads to something, I guess, what we like to call a dead air management, where if you are constantly looking at your numbers and there's nobody there, well, you might think, oh, I can just kind of relax and play the game and not really talk. But um, that's a, I don't know how many of you do that, but that, um, is uh, that's a mistake because yeah. what happens is people will come in and depending on what service you're on and what the delay is, um, you know they're not going to see anyone talking and engaging with them. I so. talk like I'm a crazy man. <laughs> like if if there were zero people in my chat room, I would talk like I had a thousand people in my chat room because that's what you want. You want somebody to come into your your live stream and go, "Wow, this guy is great." Because I'm very energetic when I when I stream. I'm very energetic and I like really keep it going hardcore for when I used to do it full time, eight to 12 hours a day. And when I was done, I was done. I was like, I'm going to bed. And then I get up the next day and do it again. And like, that was something that people really enjoyed because I was the guy that I was their morning show. I woke them up in the morning. And like, that's what they would always tell me. I wake up because of you. I just put you on in the background and do my work. And I'm like, you don't even watch the stream. They're like, no, I just listen to you. I'm like, awesome. That's cool. So yeah, like, really be energetic because a lot of people you know you go in their chat rooms and, the, and I feel bad because so many people want to do this because it's so much fun trust me it's, it's a lot of fun you get to meet cool people you get to go cool things and do stuff like this it's, it's awesome but you really got to be into it like if you're not into it they're not going to be into it like that's the thing like you have to be the guy that they go in there and they're like okay I want to stay in here this guy's great this is really cool like that's what you want to do you want to give off that vibe so whether you're doing it with zero people or thousands of people the same way. Yeah, you should apply the same mindset and same ener energy to each yeah. of your live streams, regardless of how many people are there, because that's how you build momentum. And once people do come in, they want to stick around, and that's how more people come in. Um, I'm sure you've browsed different services, and you know, when you join somebody that's boring, you're like, I'm not going to stay, right? Um, so it's funny because that's the whole like magic of a live streaming platform is you can engage with them, and then you have people streaming that aren't engaging with the people that come in. So it's there are so other ways to engage too, by the way, I was yeah. going to say. Besides your social media platform, so I like to do polls. I don't know if you guys ever remember a site that was called uh, poll.me, I think it was. Any of you guys remember that? It's where you just go to the third party and you type in and you do a poll. Like, hey, what game do you want me to play tomorrow type thing? Uh, on Twitch, that's what I use per, uh, all the time, actually. And then I do it on Twitter, because now Twitter has it built in. And Beam also has it built in, too. So, like, you don't have to leave the site anymore to go do a poll. You can literally do it in real time or have one of your moderators do it, which is really cool. We'll talk about that in just a moment, too. Moderators. Cool. So I think that's our section on engagement, unless anyone else has anything to, to talk about. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna add with, uh, like you said, you gotta stay positive, right? Like if you're bummed out or just like having a bad day and streaming and people are just like, oh, this guy's like killing me. You know what I mean? Like they want to come get pumped. They want to laugh. And if you're, if you're bummed out, they're not going to have any fun. So, I mean, sometimes you got to fake it. Right. And that comes down to like, some people just be like, I'm not feeling this day. Streams canceled, which is fine every once in a while. But if you find yourself doing that all the time, then that's cutting into your schedule. People are like checking out, you know, they're going to find other people that are there all the time. And so some days you just got to push through that and it can be really tough, but that's, I find that a lot with like the streamers that I manage. They're just like, you know, many of them will just be like, I'm done. I can't do this, you know, and everybody has dry spells, right? Some people got to walk away, you know, some people got to go outside 
and just like do something else. And I totally get that, but at the end of the day, if you're trying to maintain that schedule, sometimes you gotta tough through that and kind of fake it, but it's key, it really is. Yeah, I don't know if I'd use the word fake because I feel like that has negative connotations, but like you have to put on like your streamer face, right? Your happy face. You have to, you know, like if you want this to be a career, you have to, you know, it's you have to show up for your work, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, you have turn to show it up each and every day um, to continue that momentum that you're building. Um, so yeah, yeah, awesome. So that's engagement. Um, there's a lot of ways to engage people, and yeah. there's tons more on that. But that's just some of the, the quick, like top of the mind stuff that we wanted to share about. Um, and it seems like really like common stuff that hopefully I don't know if you guys have heard this before, or if this is the first time like a lot of this is being brought up. But it's very common in the industry a lot of, to talk about a lot of this stuff. But it's so important. A lot of people don't do it. It's kind of like the knowledge is there, but 90 percent of the people don't actually apply it. Yeah. Um, so it's important to apply, you know, what you learn and you know how to build a community. Cool, so interactivity. Um, so Twitch actually has this, they call it stream first. You may have seen like at TwitchCon, they, they did a couple announcements where you can implement games and have your viewers interact with them. Um, Beam also has it and um, we do it in a really cool way. Um, so we're gonna share a bit about the Beam platform and how you can interact with your community and what, what that actually looks like. Um, and Ethan, if you wanna, do you wanna give an overview of that? Sure, why not? So I'm gonna um, start off with the first, the, the first front yeah, page. So, yeah, so I was on Twitch for a while. Oh, this is yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Beam. Uh, it's a front page, and um, just to give you some context of what we're talking about, browse page. It's pretty typical. Um, but what we want to talk about is like interactivity. Um, so on Minecraft um, with Beam, you can actually implement. Um, we have an integration with Minecraft for you to connect Minecraft to your stream and let your viewers influence and directly, um, you know, spawn things in the game or control different elements like the weather or, or set the day or night cycle. Uh, and what this is, is it breaks down the fourth wall for your viewers to interacting. Um, so on traditionally, when you interact with your community, it's only through chat, and that's the only interaction you have. Um, and then when you you know, put a delay on top of that, 15 to 30 seconds, it's such a disconnect. Um, so what Beam does right away is we bring the latency down to 200 milliseconds. So that's a fourth of a second we mentioned earlier. Um, and you can actually have a conversation like we're having, you know, now. Um, and that makes a big difference for building your community. And then on top of that, that allows us to do what we call interactive and hook games up to actually let your viewers spawn things in. Um, so Ethan, but actually, not just games. yeah, not just games. Not just games. So if you want to talk more about, so I found that. a new love. And so, like I said, I streamed on Twitch for a while. Uh, I built up a large community on Twitch, and I played video games. And I mean, when I say that, I played them eight to twelve hours a day for six days a week. I was off on Sundays. And I did it all the time. And you'd be like, that's got to be really cool. That's awesome. After a while, it really gets really hard because you're like, okay, I got to go talk for 8 to 12 hours again and play this game. And it, and it gets, you know, it gets repetitive a lot. But then it's like, I want to do something different. So on Beam, I do interactive cooking live streams. This is going to, this is crazy. So what it gives you the ability to do, it's no longer up there, by the way. What, oh, the back? Which one? There's nothing up there. Oh. <laughs> Technical difficulties. <laughs> so when you saw the screenshots were up there, you saw where you saw the video game and you saw the buttons underneath it? Okay, though that's the interactive part of Beam. So what I do is I do interactive cooking streams. So just recently I did a interactive pizza stream. So what I did was is on Beam, you have the ability to acquire what's called sparks. So these sparks are gained through spending time watching live streams. That's what the user gets, they get these sparks. You get two sparks every minute for being a regular user on Beam, and you get four sparks every minute for being a pro user on Beam, and then you get that, you get double if you're subscribed to the, uh, to the streamer that you're watching. So what they do with these sparks is they can spend these on interactivity. So those buttons that you saw up there, you can- They're back. Oh, they're back. Cool, so each of those have a, have a value to them. So there's values, but you can set those as a streamer. So we have this, this, this cool thing called DevLab, and you can go in there and create your whole entire interactive place if you want. Do whatever you want. You can go in there and say, I want this button to do this, and it's got to trigger off at this many sparks. So here's what I did. So I said, okay, this will be really cool to do. So we did, uh, we did a regular pizza, dessert pizza, and ridiculous pizza, and each of these had a value to them. So in all these people, when they show up, they show up with big pockets of sparks, like they're ready to go. And so we'll go live, 
And what, and, and I have, so I wish I had pictures. I wanted to show that. So I have pictures of our kitchen and we have it all set up with cameras everywhere. And there's like all the ingredients are on the counter and bowls and it's all labeled and everything's really cool. Thanks to her. Cause she's <laughs> very OCD. I can't do that. So we have all that going. So it's like a big show. And as soon as we go live, all of a sudden you watch these bars just fill up. So they're going like for ridiculous pizza. Cause the biggest thing they want to do is troll you. So you want to put something cool in there like that. So when the ridiculous pizza comes up and they hit the button, this new panel comes up and all these ingredients. And we're talking about like watermelon, oranges, lemons on pizza. And so like they're just battling for what they want to put on this pizza. So we let them pick four ingredients. They pick the four ingredients. We make the pizza live on stream right there in front of them. We go, all right, you guys, this is the pizza that you made. So we do that. We cook them and we eat them live on stream. So whatever they pick, that's what goes on there. And we do it live on stream. To me, that is absolutely amazing. And I've done this with tacos, I've done this with pizza, and we did it with mac and cheese. We did a mac and cheese extravaganza, like different mac and cheeses from around the world. And we did this like cheese tasting test I had a guest on, it was awesome. So for me, this has taken it to a completely different level in interactive and live streaming. Because I'm so used to playing games, but here I get to cook and have a great time with my audience and build this audience through a whole different way of interaction. It's really cool. And I just want to um, clarify the reason why this is such a cool idea. Um, because when you talked about streaming for 8 to 12 hours, that's a long time. Yeah, it is. Um, and coming up with your own just you know dead air management, like we talked about, talking that entire time or engaging with your community through chat. And I get to stand, um, too, by the way. <laughs> that's cool. Um, you know, there's, that's a lot yeah. to stream. And um, what this lets your viewers do is spice things up um, in a sense in that you never know what to expect or what's around the corner depending on the game you're playing. So like with this Minecraft integration, um, there's different challenges the viewers can, can trigger. So in this screenshot here, the viewers actually triggered a zombie apocalypse. So you could just be playing through a normal game of Minecraft in your world and your viewers are changing the elements or changing the scenarios that you're in. Um, and that creates a more entertaining live stream which thus, you know, wants pe people want to stay they yeah. want to watch longer because they don't know what's next yeah. um so and here, here's just another scenario of that of a surgeon simulator where the viewers actually uh does anyone know a youtuber named ant venom by chance no <laughs> all right well there's so many youtubers out there um he's got a couple million and he tried out beam um, and did surgeon simulator and he successfully did a, a surgery with six five of them in a row, uh, with 60 viewers all collectively controlling um, and pressing these buttons. So he controlled uh, one part of the element, or one... He controlled the mouse, and I think they mm -hmm. controlled the hand. They, they controlled the, the hand. Yeah, the fingers. And they, they did successfully five surgeries without killing the patient, which is awesome. Because you know how hard that game is. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, um... Well, it's going to be fun and exciting. Yeah. Because... Yeah. You know, when you're doing these games, you're able to like, you know, sit there and you're like, hit the shake button or, you know, hit the, the zombie apocalypse button. Hurry up, do that. <laughs> or, you know, when there, it was funny because when we were doing the pizza stream, there's, you know, the regular pizza. And so on that, they had to actually pick the sauce. Yep. And so we were like, pick the red sauce, pick the red sauce. And you've got your whole entire chat, you know, they're interacting and they're engaging and they're like excited as you are. Yep. And they're able, you know, it's not just they're chatting. They're actually able to like push a button and join you in that. And yep. so it's, it's actually really exciting and a lot of fun. Yep. Yeah, I think it, I, wow, I got really loud. Um, I think there's a, there's a real connection there that you get with the viewers to the streamer, and there's something that's, that's lost when you don't do interactive streams. You know, like, I know a lot of people that'll donate to big streamers just so they'll read their message, just so they'll feel, you know, like, oh, they, you know, they, they talked about me, they know, they, they recognize I'm there. And I think that there's something to be said about this where you can be sitting in a, in a chat room with hundreds of people making a pizza, and you're all sharing this, this connection and sharing this this event that's happening and you're all laughing and I, I don't know there's a real connection there that uh, I think is lost on the internet a lot these days. Mm -hmm. So this brings back that uh, you know Saturday night with your friends coming over and all playing together, but just at scale on the internet. Yeah. So the last scenario we have is just another. Uh, it's actually from Rocket League where the collective of viewers are playing Rocket League and they're controlling, um, and because there's 200 milliseconds of delay. <laughs> um, they can actually see what they're doing and actually successfully yeah, play the game. With no delay, there's no, there's no loss. Like, it's literally like they're playing the, the game. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to just be loud anyways. Yeah, like I feel I like... I tired of moving it. I, I feel like there's no way they've ever won a game. Like, it seems, yeah. it seems so difficult. <laughs> 
yeah, so I mean, that's kind of, I think that's the last slide we have. So we wanted to turn it over to questions. Yeah. We have about a little more than 15 minutes. Um, but feel free to ask us questions about anything, not just interactive or not just Beam, but we're, um, we're all come from a variety of backgrounds, as you've heard from YouTube, Twitch, and Beam. Um, we just want to help you guys build your, build your communities and you know, let us know what you have for us. Go ahead. Co-streaming? Yeah, so you can definitely co-stream. We have a lot of streamers that will, um, they'll all stream to one like hub channel, and then they'll you know use OBS or XSplit to put each corner. Um, they'll put, if there's like four, we actually have a team system. Um, so if you're on a team, you can you know put each person in each corner. So you have up to four people. Um, and we're working on a feature that actually lets you uh, just do that natively in the site, where if each of you are streaming individually to your channels, you can actually uh, combine forces and have a combined chat. So I know there's a lot of like third-party services to do that, uh, but we're actually building that directly into Beam for, for teams to be able to co-stream together. And that's something that we're super passionate about and want to bring to the platform. And then you had a second question on that? Or is that both of them? It was kind of all together. <laughs> awesome. It's kind of all together. Cool, what else do we have over here? Yeah, so I'll answer the, the second question real quick, and then you'll answer the first. Well, I, think, I think for you, for like, yeah, I, I can answer both of them. Um, one of the things you want to do is, if you're not live, like, like if, if you have a presence, like, even if you don't have, like, just build your presence, like, on Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that, but, like, hey, guys, check it out. Uh, we just streamed so-and-so yesterday. Make sure you go check out the VOD. It's up on the channel. Like, you want to push them towards that. You want them to know, because if they don't know, they're not going to go. So, like, yeah, so, like, that would be, like, up to you to just be, like, as soon as you're done streaming, like, if you miss the VOD, you know, hey, guys, we're not live anymore, but we'll be live tomorrow at this time. You always want to give them information, like, hey, we'll be live tomorrow, same time, even though you missed it today, but guess what? You can watch today's VOD. It's right here. Here's a link. Mm -hmm. So that would be the best way to do it. And then how long do those videos live? Like um, you said, on, on Twitch, I think they're 30 days. 30 days. So on Beam, Beam um, they're, 14 they're, 14 they're 14 and then... It's, yeah, it's 14 days for regular and 90 days for partners on Beam. It really depends. Oh, okay. uh, it, it depends because, like, you know, when you, depending on the type of streamer you are, you could be very energetic and, like, you know, the first hour just blast through it and then all of a sudden you're just kind of like, you know, uh, just maybe I don't want to stream anymore type thing. Like, in your head, you know, you're like, all right, I'm done. Like, you could just be an hour streamer. Like, there are people that literally go live for an hour and have a ton of people watching. Like, that it just all depends on the streamer. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it loses. I mean, you know, if you're live streaming and you're watching a VOD, it loses some of the the magic because it's not live, and you're, you know, that's that's the whole purpose it's of like live watching streaming. YouTube. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like watching YouTube. Um, but I think earlier you had a question about you know subscribers and you know if someone subscribes maybe an hour or three hours. Um, I think an important thing to like when we did our cooking stream. Um, you know, we set goals for viewers um, to subscribe. And we said, all right, every five on our cooking stream, every, and this is. So I'm crazy. I'm, I'm stupid crazy. <laughs> so like on my first one, the taco stream, I picked out eight different hot sauces from like just a regular hot sauce to the world's hottest hot sauce. And I had a value on each one of them. And somebody came in and dropped a lot of money for me to do five shots of the hottest hot sauce. I was so the biggest mistake in my life, I'm not gonna lie. I thought I put a really high price tag on it, but I didn't. They went and did it anyways, and I regretted that. Oh. And then my, go ahead. How much was it? 250 per shot, yeah. It was, I thought it was a lot, and like somebody came in and, yeah, they're like, yeah, guess what, you're gonna do this. And I was like, oh my, I couldn't believe it. Um, and then uh, another stream I did uh, anchovy paste for subs. So every five subs, I did anchovy paste. I got like 50 something subs from it. So like, you know, you've gotta be willing to go that far for stuff like that. And I am, I'm dumb. So you can, you can start clear. slow. You don't have to, you, you don't have you know, to be that I, crazy. I'm willing to go that far. Yeah, you personally, you don't have to you go like crazy, to. but I guess the point I'm making is, is you wanna set goals for your viewers to, yeah. you know, to work towards that. 
um, that they're going to be excited to see and that they're going to want to share your content. Um, so another one, the one I was actually thinking of is, uh, uh, who likes jelly beans? Anybody? Who's heard of the Bean Boozled Challenge? So, yeah, if you don't know what that is, um, yeah, it's horrible. It's absolutely <laughs> yes. horrible. Um, but I've seen I've seen people doing this on stream, and unfortunately, we, we, did it. we tried it a couple of times, and <laughs> it was... I'll, I'll just say it was fun. Uh, but if you don't know what it is, is it's a, you get a spinner, or it's a box of jelly beans from, um, I forget the company, but it's called the Bean Boozled Challenge if you look it up. Jelly Belly. Yeah, that's Jelly Belly, that's it. Yeah. And um, you have a 50-50 chance to either get a disgusting jelly bean or a really good one. Um, and these are like, when I say disgusting, like it's, uh, what are the flavors? It's like grass clippings, rotten eggs, rotten eggs like, like booger. Um, and then there's like, you know, you have the good ones that are like grape or, you know, mango or whatever else. Um, so you get a spinner and you spin it and you, you know, on stream, we would show the spinner and we would, you know, every time someone would sub or every time it was five subs, yeah. we would, you know, spin it. And um, all, everyone that was on the live stream would actually take it, you know, it. We, we would do it. Or we would take a jelly bean and, you know, we would see who, who had horrible jelly beans or who got good ones. Um, so the viewers, you know, wanted to subscribe or they wanted to donate or whatever, whatever goal you're working, yeah. you set for them, they want to work towards that because they want to see what, you know, they want to see us do that. Um, so goals are important to have. Yeah, they are. Other questions? Yes. Yeah, that is. Um, we actually <laughs> we took it out. Uh, it was funny. We had a slide on that to show that. But yes, yeah, so we have a full suite of, of analytics uh, for non-partners and for partners. Um, they're actually very similar. The only thing partners get is just uh, around the, the subscriptions and things like that. Um, so as a non-partner, you get everything that they get too. Um, so you can see viewers over uh, hourly intervals, daily or weekly. Um, you know what your peaks are. What you know weekly as well. Um, you can see your follower count over time. Uh, you can also see what country they're from, what languages, um, because we, we collect a lot of that. And it's not personalized, so you don't see you know, who it is, um, but it's aggregated together so you can see, all right, you know, I'm actually getting a lot of viewership from Brazil. I wonder why that is, you know, and what day was that on? What game was I playing? What was, you know, if you're seeing growth, you can absolutely capitalize on that. So looking at your analytics are important as well. Um, and most platforms provide some type of you know, analytics to look at for that. Um, so if you're wanting to grow your audience, that's also an important part of it. Go. Yeah, so different platforms have different criteria or how they you know, judge or how they accept people into their partnership program. Um, so Twitch, you know, there's a 500 concurrent viewer kind of like minimum that they ask for. Beam, we're significantly lower like uh, because we're growing. Um, but we also like at Beam, we judge our uh, how people get accepted into their partners or the partnership program a little differently. We base it more off of the personality and that they're they're going to represent the community well because that's something we really care about. Um, we don't like toxicity. And we want to try and you know it's it's the internet, so you're going to have it. But we don't we. We want our partners to be the very best, uh, you know, representation of what we have in the community. So that's how we like to focus on it. Metrics are still important, or you know, numbers are still important, but it's not like the one factor that we judged off of. So it depends on what platform you're streaming to. Um, so most platforms they have a partnership page that you can look at and what the requirements are, um, and you want to, you know, look. You want to look at those so you know, you know, what goals you have to hit or what you have to work towards to becoming a partner. Um, if you're kind of in the, fl or you're you're in a state of transition of like. You're starting to build an audience and you're getting people that want to subscribe. Um, there's actually some great services out there, uh, one called GameWisp that actually lets you, it's kind of like a, um, what's the other, the patron. Um, so it's called GameWisp. Wisp, yeah, G-A-M-E, W-H-I-S-P. Awesome, and uh, it allows you to actually have your viewers subscribe to you on this service, so it's kind of like a, it's a third-party subscription button, uh, but most platforms don't discourage it because it's a good way for them to see um, that you're actually, you have people that want to subscribe to you. Um, because then you can go to the platform and say, hey, I've actually got 30 or 50 or however, however many subscribers you have on this other service, wouldn't you like to bring that to you know, the platform? So you can use that, and most, most platforms don't take issue with that, and I know we don't. Yeah. I'm actually glad you brought that up because I think uh, a common mistake for new streamers, myself included, when I first started was to just like slap that donation button on there. And I think when like when you have like two viewers and you have a donation button, I think you kind of look like a jerk. Or, yeah, because you know, I mean? you know everyone is doing it, right? Everyone right. wants to work towards this. So I think your your heart and your your heart has to be in the right place 
and your mindset has to be in the right place. Right. That you're not just wanting to monetize your audience. Um, you know, unfortunately, that's the way sometimes the world is. Um, but I know, like, we don't, you know, we still accept partners on that. But, like, we look for the people that want to just generally are genuine and that want to be entertaining and want to provide value. And uh, think of kind of, you know, the money as the second part or as the, you know, not the most important thing. Uh, but, you know, that's sometimes the way the world is. So it all depends on who you are, I guess, as a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can set, you know, what type of content you're streaming on the platform. So that's important because you want to let your viewers know, or you want to let people know that are browsing these sites, what type of game you're playing, or if it's a talk show. You know, you want to let people know, you want to advertise appropriately what you're actually doing to attract that, that crowd that's interested in that. Um, when it comes to, like, partnership, we love all types of, of content and all types of personalities and different, you know, if you want to be a gaming talk show, that's awesome. We love that. If you want to do interactive cooking, like, that's so cool. You know, it's unique. It's valuable. Um, we love to see those creative solutions and, you know, working to differentiate yourself from other people out there because that's that's where we see people that are really wanting to, you know, do this and go further with it. Anybody else? Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so we know them. We know them very well. Yeah. Yeah, I have I've used it. When I was when I was switching over from Twitch to Beam, I would I would I would basically stream both to both. And then I just finally got to the point where I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna stream that's what I did. So I started it at first. No, because like I had a, I have a, I have a large community on Twitch, and I didn't want to just leave. Like I wanted to let them know what I was doing, and like, and and you know, one of the things that we didn't talk around. One of the really important things with your live stream also is moderators. Why I was bringing that up is because my moderators are the ones that would say, "Hey, he's also streaming on Beam." Like I would stream both platforms. It's really easy to use too. Yeah. I do recommend it. Yeah, no, I think that's a great service, and um, I don't know any platforms that don't like people using it, as far as I'm aware. Like, we fully support it because um, I think our job as a platform is to, you know, like, we're here, we want to help you guys grow. So wherever you're finding viewership, we don't want to limit you. So, like, when it comes to partnership, on some services, they don't let you restream if you're a partner. Um, that's not a requirement we have because we want you as content creators to be able to build your audience where you're finding viewers. Um, so that's a great service to use. It's super easy to, to get started with as well. Anybody else? No? Oh, there we go. Uh, let me think. I got one that is go probably on. the sexiest answer you'll hear all day. Um, it's uh, track your expenses, <laughs> which is like, no one does it, right? Like, you want to keep track of the games you're buying for streaming, if you buy lights, if you buy mics, all this stuff. Keep track of that because, like, people forget how much they're spending versus taking in. A lot of that stuff, if you are a business and this is your job, is tax deductible, which people, like, don't know. And then, like, it's kind of cool that video games can end up being tax deductible, things like that, right? So it's not, again, not a sexy answer, but nobody does that in the beginning. And, like, it's a great thing to start right away. Um, I'll tell you a mistake. I didn't make this mistake, but a lot of people make this mistake where they switch from mature to non-mature. Like they'll, so they'll build, so I built my whole entire audience on YouTube as a uh, family friendly audience. When we played with our son and we did our family ventures, he's 16 now and we started when he was nine. So, you know, a lot has changed since six, you know, nine to 16. So like I started family friendly, we did this for a long time. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go try this Twitch thing. So I did this Twitch thing and I went completely mature on Twitch. So I built two separate audiences up, which was awesome. A lot of people will start, you know, they'll start with a mature audience and they'll realize, well, you know what, I'm not really getting the views that I want or the people that are in here. So I'm going to go ahead and they've got like 10, let's say 10 people, like 10 people is still a number. And they have 10 people that have been with them ever since they've been a mature stream. All of a sudden they decide, it's like, you know what, I'm going to be a non-mature family friendly stream. So all of a sudden those 10 people that you build up are like, dude, like, what are you doing? Like, don't, don't do that. It's the worst mistake you can make. Because I see a lot of YouTubers do it where they feel like they're not getting the views and they, they're family friendly and they're like, well, maybe if I swear, it'll be okay. And I mean, I've watched people go from millions and millions of views to cutting it completely in half by doing that. So it's the worst mistake you can make. Uh, yeah, so don't want to flip flop between yeah. what you're doing. You want to, you know, early on try and define what type of streamer you are and your personality. You can evolve with that, but just don't make quick jumps from point A to point B without, because you have to remember your community that's watching you, like, you know, 
they came to you, they, they come back each time because of, of you, right, and who you are. So one day, you know, they're, they're watching you and you're family friendly, and the next you're, you're swearing like a sailor, they're, you know, they're going to be very confused and they're likely to drop off because it's like you totally changed who you were because, um, you know, you forgot to bring them along with you for that ride. So um, communication and transparency about where you want to take your, your stream and, you know, what you're doing and how you want to grow is important yep. um, because you want to keep your community in the loop of what's going on. Yeah, so oversaturation is, um, you know, it's a concern for a lot of people, especially like on Twitch or something. And that's where we're seeing a lot of people because it's just hard to, you know, get started out there. Um, so new people, it's like, you know, we've had a lot of new content creators come to Beam and just like start and build an audience there because they're able to get noticed and they're able to, you know, stand out from a lot of people. Um, so it's something, you know, we're definitely, you know, focused on and want to see how we can solve that. So one, one of the things we do right now is on the browse page, actually, I'll go back, I've got a slide on it. You'll see, we actually, um, we have four different tabs at the top. So we have all streamers, so that's just everyone, you know, in order of the account. But you'll, we also have rising stars and new streamers and stream teams so that people can look through and, you know, swap through because it's right there. So when you're getting started as a new streamer, you show up in the new streamer category. Um, and you know, we put it right in front of people's face on the browse page for them to say like, all right, if you're interested in just new streamers, here they are. We want to, you know, and you're at the top of the page. Um, same with rising stars. We have an algorithm that calculates how we, you know, who we put in there. And um, it's based off a lot of, of interactivity and how many people are coming into your chat. Um, really, if you're making good quality content, we want to put people in there because, you know, they may not have the great numbers in the couple hundreds, but um, they're making good content. And, you know, good content is what we're all looking for at the end of the day. So, you know, by having that tab there, um, we're showcasing these people up front and they're not down at the bottom of the page and that's the only option. Um, so it's something we're concerned about and we definitely are always trying to find creative ways to um, avoid it. It's, you know, it happens, um, but we want to find ways to showcase people that are making good quality content. Yeah, so the cool thing about us is like we're super community focused and we love listening to the community. Um, we have a whole, like we have a whole, our whole t community team and just team across the board is, um, we're really big on listening to our community um, and taking in ideas. We have a whole feedback page designed just for people to submit ideas and get uh, votes on it um, for us to look at and that gives us a way to track it and what people are interested in ideas. Um, but we're very open with, you know, communication to us. Um, and we want to, like, we want to hear, like, that, that was kind of the whole premise is we wanted to start a platform that um, was really involved with the community and the community actually had a say. So, like, our partners, even, like, just the entire community helps us guide and direct people. And we, even as a platform, when we're thinking about new features, we go out and we make blog posts and we ask, we make forum posts and we ask people, and we even do our own um, live stream and we ask people what they think about, you know, hey, we got this, this many feature requests or we have this new idea from the community. What do you guys think about this? What's your feedback? So yeah, absolutely, we want to hear from people. Um, yeah, we've had, um, because of like, we're all built off of the late, like, you know, built off of the latest technology in the last couple of years, which is why we can get such a low delay and why we have such um, awesome features on the service. Um, and that allows us to move very quickly. Yeah, we're over a couple, we're gonna end in just a minute, I think we're at 45. Um, but we've been able to implement new features from community members like the next day. So that's how quick we are at doing stuff. Not always in every case, but it just depends on what it is. But like we, we do move that quickly. Um, we're constantly developing and adding new things. So I think that's the, the time of our panel. Thank you guys so much. Thank We're going to be guys. around. Thank you very um, much. If anyone wants to chat with us, if you have more questions. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming.